So I just wanted to um, start by saying that we're going to talk this morning um, mostly about some advice on rapid reviews that comes out of the WHO um, guide that was just launched in Cape Town. Um, but I'm also going to do a little bit about the Cochrane Rapid, rapid Review Methods Group, which is um, one of 17 methods groups for the Cochrane Collaboration. Um, in, we always give conflicts of interest and declarations of interest. And aside from being a co-convener of the Cochrane Rapid Review, methods group, I do get paid to do this work as part of my salary um, for Oregon Health and Sciences University, um, the Center for Evidence-Based Policy, and we've used rapid reviews in our work for many years here. We work primarily with state policymakers in about half of the U.S. states. Um, I was a co-author on um, a chapter for the WHO publication, Rapid Reviews to Strengthen Health Policy and Systems, a Practical Guide. Um, but I've received no specific funding for that work and don't have any other conflicts of interest to declare. So um, rapid reviews have become increasingly common, um, largely because um, systematic reviews, I think as you all would be aware, um, take quite a bit of resource and quite a bit of time um, when the Cochrane um, entity approved our review group uh, or our methods group, one of the motivations was really that Cochrane reviews on average were taking over two years to come to fruition um, and that there was the feeling that there were perhaps things that could be learned about streamlining or being more efficient with methods that would come out of such a methods group. So um, we had sort of a long ramp-up period, as many um, Cochrane entities do, um, with some preliminary discussions and then an initial exploratory meeting at the Cochrane Colloquium in Canada in 2013. Um, that proceeded with an initial organization meeting um, at a mid-year meeting, and then we were registered as the Cochrane Methods Group in October of 15 after the Vienna Colloquium. So our remit is really to give Cochrane um, broadly guidance about rapid review methods. Um, we serve as a forum for discussion about those methods, and I think that that forum really exists both within and without of Cochrane proper. Um, we do connect with a lot of people who don't do reviews for Cochrane or are not involved with Cochrane in other ways. Um, various ones of us in the group do methodologic research um, on rapid reviews, and there's, um, as I'm sure you know, a lot to do in there. And we do quite a bit of training and support, so I'm here with you today. Um, but our group has also conducted quite a few workshops at Cochrane Colloquia, mid-year meetings, or other um, entities such as Evidence Live in the UK. So we. Um, do some other kinds of training in Canada. Um, and my colleagues Chantal Garrity and Adrian Stevens um, do quite a bit of support across Canada and, um, and are helpful in that way. Um, we do maintain a website um, for rapid reviews through Cochrane. Um, you can see the URL there. On that website, you will see um, a bibliography of methods-related um, publications that relate to rapid reviews. Um, we do put out a semi-annual newsletter, um, and if you're interested in receiving that or other information from our group, um, you can sign up for the mailing list at the website. The co-conveners of the group are listed here on this slide, Chantal Garrity and Adrian Stevens, who are both at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute, Gerald Gartnoller and um, Barbara Nussbaumer Street, who are both with Cochrane Austria, um, Chris Camel, who was with the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technology and Health, and myself. Um, the methods group is um, supported 
through Cochrane Austria and um, in terms of some instrumental support like administration and is also linked with the um, Canadian Centre.